Electromagnetism has the electrical part and the magnetic part. This chapter introduces the magnetic part, which is um, just fascinating. The magnetism is, has been studied for years, uh, centuries and centuries. Um, lodestones were discovered by ancient peoples and uh, that, that are magnetic materials. And, and um, the fascination continues to this day with magnets. So the needle of a compass is a permanent magnet. It has a north pole, north magnetic pole, and a south pole. And, um, and it's oriented on a spindle and balanced so that it can point in the direction of the Earth's magnetic fields. The first concept in the chapter is one that you are probably familiar with already. State the direction of the force between magnets. And the answer is very, very similar to the force between charges. Like poles repel. What do we mean by that? A north pole repels a north pole, and a south pole repels a south pole. Nothing more than that. It's just like like charges repel. And then unlike poles attract. So if we have a north pole, so if we flip one of the magnets backwards, then the north pole will attract the south pole and, and vice versa for the south and the north. Something you've seen before, I imagine. Played with magnets when you were kids. On this first demonstration, <coughs> we're going to show um, parallel and anti-parallel connections of Zen magnets. These are small neodymium magnets. They're, they're spheres, and um, they can be used to build things like this icosahedron. The icosahedron is one of five platonic solids. It has 20 triangles with one, two, three, four, five triangles meeting at each vertex. So it's a very, very beautiful shape. The magnets have interesting magnetic properties that puzzled me at first. A lot of people have a lot of fun with these magnets building things, um, as we do in our particular family unit. One thing that puzzled me about the magnets is that if you, if you imagine the end of this magnet, each of these magnets has a north pole and a south pole. And when you line them up in a chain, the north and south poles touch, because the north and, and south attract each other. So you get a chain like this. So you can be sure that at the end of the chain, this very tip of the chain will be either a north pole or a south pole. And I've checked, it's a north pole. So if you were to take two magnet chains, and put them side by side, then we have two north poles here. You can imagine them repelling each other, and sure enough, they do repel each other. But as soon as these magnets get to within about one magnet diameter of each other, they shift and attract each other. So now what you see is the North Pole here is attracting the South Pole of its neighbor. Shown here is uh, what we call parallel connections. If you imagine these red halves, red hemispheres representing the North Pole of the magnets, then the magnets shift off by half a magnet, and this North Pole attracts this South Pole, and this North Pole attracts this South Pole. So um, the peak of one magnet fits in this valley. Um, peaks fit into valleys. If you, uh, the other way that you can connect these magnets up is to have a magnet chain that is now reversed. So I'm going to come back around the other way and connect them up this way. So now what we have is a north pole here and a south pole here. 
And this is what we call anti-parallel connections. So now we've got all the north poles for this chain on this side, all the north poles for this chain on this side. And that north pole attracts that south pole. And you can use them to form various shapes, um, an anti-parallel uh, double ring like that. You can do the same thing with the parallel rings. It actually did it on its own. So there's a parallel ring with the peaks fitting into valleys of their neighbors. That's anti-parallel ring. I'm sorry, parallel ring. I said it right the first time. And then an anti-parallel ring here with, with peaks butting up against peaks. OK, to summarize what we talked about there, two magnets that are placed, up side by, placed together side by side with their north poles side by side will repel each other. And, um, and that's the first demonstration that we did. These, these repel each other until you get those two chains within about a magnet diameter of each other. And then what happens is instead of being butted up side by side, one of, one of the chains moves over by half a diameter, uh, half a sphere diameter and the north and the south poles um, get to attract each other. Here's a south and a north, etc. Whereas with anti-parallel connections, um, that coincides with having the two magnets, one reversed with the north poles and south poles attracting each other, we get this um, kind of a scenario with the magnets butting up against each other instead of fitting into the hollows of their neighbors. And we talked about the uh, anti-parallel chains <coughs> and rings as well as parallel chains and rings. You can build a lot of beautiful things with these, uh, with these magnets. Uh, these are some of the things we built in our own particular family unit. So this is a, de a video demonstration of the magnetic field of a bar magnet using a compass to visualize the direction of the field. And this will introduce the idea of a the, the next concept, and that is that the direction of the magnetic field. I've got a bar magnet on the table here. Its north pole is denoted red, south pole green. And I've also ha got a compass. Uh, compass is useful for finding the direction of the Earth's magnetic field, obviously, that's what it's for. But you can also use it to determine which pole is the North Pole or the South Pole if you don't know previously. The North Pole, the magnetic field lines emanate from the North Pole. So they come out of the North Pole, come around the magnet, and then into the South Pole. And I can demonstrate that using this compass. The direction of the, the needle on the compass is given this, this red portion of the needle uh, indicates the direction of north. And so when I bring this compass near the north pole, it doesn't point, uh, the, the north part of the compass doesn't point toward the north pole, but instead points in the direction of the magnetic field. So that's the important point for this demonstration. The direction that the compass needle points, the red part of it, is the direction of the magnetic field. And just so you understand how it works, this is the north pole of the magnet and the south pole of the ma magnetic compass needle. This south pole is attracting the north pole of this bar magnet. So if we then want to investigate how the magnetic field direction changes as we move in, in the vicinity of this bar magnet, now we've moved here and we can see that the magnetic field lines are, are starting to curve. At this point, the magnetic field lines have come out here and are, are going in exactly the opposite direction. And then once we uh, are down by the south pole of the bar magnet, the magnetic fields are again pointing in the same direction that they were over here. So 
magnetic field lines look like. They come out here, come around, and then in here. The same thing on the other side. Come out, around, and then in on this side. But the magnetic, uh, the compass needle points in the direction of the local magnetic field. This is a, a model of a similar thing. It's a bar magnet in the center with the north pole denoted by red and the south pole denoted by blue in this case. And each of these little uh, red things are little tiny little compass needles. And, um, and they give the same information that we got before. Let me get this one out of the, out of the field. So we've got a compass needle pointing this way, meaning that it's a, uh, the magnetic field is that way, around, and then in to the south pole, as denoted by, by all these little magnetic compass needles. That's how to determine the direction of a magnetic field using a compass and the overall field produced by a bar magnet. And this is a very, very important um, field. Okay, a concept. Uh, concept two, state the direction of the magnetic field. We're going to define the direction of the magnetic field in a very, very simple way. The direction of the magnetic field at a particular point is the direction indicated by the north pole of a small compass needle at that point. So as we saw in the demo, if you put that compass needle here by the north pole of a magnet, then that, that compass needle points away from that north pole. We're going to define the direction of the magnetic field to be the direction that that compass needle points. That's it. So uh, magnetic fields come out that way, they come around this way just like we showed uh, around this way here. That's all there is to it. So let's talk about the rules for magnetic field lines. You might uh, recognize these, uh, the rules. There was a nice little mnemonic invented by my wife uh, for electric fields. Magnetic field lines follow the same rules, uh, except there are only four here instead of five, and I'll tell you why in just a second. Magnetic field lines begin only at north poles or at infinity. Same, um, same language, et cetera, except for electric field lines, they begin at positive charges or infinity, exactly. And then magnetic fields end only at south poles or infinity. So here's a, here are the magnetic field lines for this bar magnet. Here are the magnetic fields emanating, beginning at this north pole. This particular magnetic field line ends at infinity. So it can end out at infinity. Um, then around here, this magnetic field line begins at infinity and ends on the south pole. So um, you can either begin or end at infinity. This, uh, this configuration should look similar to a configuration of electric fields that we have already studied. If you'll remember, if we had a positive charge here and a negative charge here, the electric field lines emanate from the positive charge and terminate on the negative charge. So this is called a magnetic dipole. This is called an electric dipole. Why do you call it a, a dipole? It's because it has two poles, a positive and a negative. Here in this case, we have two poles of the North Pole and the South Pole. Magnetic field lines never intersect. And then finally, magnetic fields are strongest where the field lines are closest together. So you expect really strong fields in here, 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 over here you got strong fields, weaker and weaker fields as you get further and further away um, from the bar magnet. Uh, rule number five had to deal with um, the number of magnetic field lines versus the strength of the, of the magnitude of the charge. Um, here, 
we, there's no such thing as a magnetic monopole. You can't isolate a North Pole or a South Pole. And you say, well, yes, I can. I can take my saw, my hacksaw, cut this magnet in half. And um, that'll give me a North Pole here and a South Pole there. Well, nice try. Um, the problem with that is as soon as you cut that magnet in half, another North Pole and another South Pole are born. So this left side of the right half of that magnet becomes a North Pole. And the right side of the left half becomes a South Pole. And no matter how, much, how many times you cut it up, you're going to get that same uh, behavior. So there are no magnetic monopoles. In fact, we'll talk about this later on as a very fundamental element of physics. Um, it's been one that's been the subject of a lot of investigation to, to try and ask whether there really can be magnetic monopoles, if you can isolate a North Pole or isolate a South Pole. So far, none have been observed, and um, we're stuck with, with dipoles. Uh, this is the same configuration using magnetic iron filings. Uh, these are just iron filings that line up in the direction of the field, so this is an experimental confirmation for the, the field lines due to this magnetic dipole. Uh, let's talk about the Earth. If we're here um, near the equator of the Earth and we have a compass needle, what direction is that compass needle going to point? You say, well, uh, toward the magnetic North Pole. And I say, yeah, you're right. So that compass needle will point north. It's not a trick question. And, uh, and so all these magnetic field lines near the equator are indeed pointing north. That leads to a little bit of a kind of a contradiction with the poor little Earth, and that is that the, these magnetic field lines come up toward the North Pole and then come into the Earth at the North Pole. Well, we talked about in the previous slide that the magnetic field lines emanate, they, come, they begin at North Poles. <laughs> and we got the little problem, itsy bitsy problem here that the magnetic field lines are coming in at what we call the North Pole of the Earth. The Earth's North Pole is not a North Pole, I'm so sorry to tell you. It's actually a South Pole. <laughs> um, it corresponds to the South Pole of a bar magnet. So the magnetic field lines, yeah, sure, they do point north when we're here uh, where we are in the Earth, but they come up toward the north, what we call the North Pole, and they come into the Earth there. So, so the bottom line here is that the magnetic field lines end at the Earth's North Pole, which is therefore corresponds to the South Pole of a bar magnet. Uh, what direction is... Uh, magnetic field at point P, this point here, directly below a point at the center of the magnet. The numbered arrows represent various directions, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we want to know what the direction of the magnetic field is here. Just like we did in electrical problems, we want to ask about the field created by this magnet at this point. So the best thing we can do is to start drawing the magnetic field lines um, and particularly, we're interested in the one that crosses through this point. Well, we know that magnetic field lines begin at n magnetic north poles, and then they come around, and they end at south poles. Easy enough. So what's the direction of the magnetic field when it passes through this point P? And the answer is it's, it's heading in the direction of 1, toward the left, toward the right. So um, that's all there is to it for how to do these kinds of problems.